Welcome back to the show, everybody. We're doing something a little bit different today, which I think is important to understand the the evolution of the history of NFTs. I'm here with uh, Daniel Charpentier, who is the creator of Creatures, which is the first NFT project on Solana. Now, I know my community is uh, primarily dominated within the context of 2011 to 2019, um, but I think it's important to look into what is happening now and currently being involving and trying to see what kind of a historical moments and provenance and see how a lot of these, the early evolutions of projects and tokens on these other chains are very similar. They're just in different, uh, different time periods and with some more modern approaches. So I'm very excited for this conversation, Daniel. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. Thank you. I'm excited as well. Thank you for having me. It's, it's quite funny because I was browsing through Solana and as we were talking uh, before this, my business partner has been trying to get me into Solana NFTs for a long time. And uh, it, I, every blockchain has its own issues from from fees to, to the network, to the users and, and so forth. But Solana NFTs have probably the second biggest traction right now, or maybe third, if you say Ethereum's obviously number one. Then you have uh, kind of the counterparty collection with Rare Pepe's and then uh, Solana and with Magic Eden just getting a, a large investment seed round from, uh, I forget which VC. Uh, to me, a lot of people want to dismiss it and, you know, call it as the poor people chain or whatever it is. But there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff that's happening out there. And so uh, we're going to dive through some of the history of your evolution. And uh, I'll put a bunch of this on the screen. But first, uh, tell us a little bit about about Daniel. How long have you been in crypto? Um, or if you weren't, if you if Solana was the first project that uh, or first crypto that you started building or investing in, uh, what did you do prior that led you into dabbling on Solana? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I, I'm a giant nerd. Um, so I, I, you know, I've got my first computer from my grandparents when I was like six, and been you know programming, hobbyist programmer my whole life, um, building little things. So um, yeah, I mean, I discovered crypto you know from the the early times, Bitcoin, and I remember playing around with it, learning about it, playing around with it, mining a few blocks, and, and I wish I had those hard drives um, from uh, long ago. But uh, um, yeah, it, you know, I was. I was very interested from the get-go because it's like, oh, okay, this looks cool. And then as you dive in deeper, you're like, wow, this is this is a way for us, for me to like control my control my money without you know having to relinquish control to other you know the the bank or the evil enterprise or, or whatever. Um, and then it's like I very quickly went from man, I can control my own money to there's no way any government's going to allow this to exist, you know, in, in the beginning, because it's like it's uh, monetary control is one of the, the fundamental things that uh, governments like to, to hold on to. Uh, but from there, yeah, it's uh, um, been there through the evolution of, you know, you know Bitcoin and you know, Ethereum and you know, the apps, uh, the dApps uh, that are available and playing around with those, but really all from a, a nerd tinkering perspective, um, other than, you know, mining uh, Bitcoin in the beginning, I think the first crypto that I purchased may have been Ripple, but uh, soon after Ken, which is what we use in uh, in the Creatures game itself. Um, and then of course, you know, just like most other people, I've got, you know, 50 other little things uh, in the wallet and maybe one day they'll do something. Yeah, right. That's that. Uh, that's kind of what the the thesis behind historical NFTs. There's a bunch of people who dabbled with uh, crypto kitties and curio cards and crypto punks back in 2017 when they were all essentially free, and then uh, all of a sudden this random movement of digital antiquities popped up, and now a lot of them are, are valuable. In this space, you never really know, and I think it's going to be very similar with uh, in-game uh, assets, in-game items with that. Uh, some of the games that are either first with a timestamp or they become a popular game. Some of those early creations, whether they're, they're skins or the actual creatures or weapons or whatever it may be, I think that can essentially what, what this like uh, significant asset um, community will, will uh, gravitate towards. Yeah, I totally agree. And as a gamer, like that's one of the things that I was and am most excited about. Um, yes, there, there's definitely like big brain, huge, like world chain, uh, changing, like DeFi applications and, and whatnot. But, you know, bringing it a little bit closer to like my daily life as a gamer. And I've spent I don't even know how many hundreds of hours on various RPGs. My wife is a uh, you know d uh, crazy into Fortnite and the, the, the idea that 
oh wait, you spent like a million dollars or, you know, you spent some, you know, a lot of money on V bucks to buy all of these items in Fortnite. Well, what if you could just, you know, sell those, give those away, whatever to other people, but in all of these games, you know, or the RPGs or, or wow or whatnot, it's like, you don't really own it. You, the, the way to transact and give it to someone else is, you know, typically the easiest only way is like, all right, I'm going to sell my whole account. Um, so yeah, to, to be able to, to do that, like you invest so much of your time and money into a game to be able to take those things that you earned and, um, sell them, give them, uh, away, whatever that's, that's immensely like, uh, um, useful from a, a gamer's perspective. Right. Yeah, it, it really absolutely is. And, uh, for those that are listening now, I, I pulled up the, uh, the Twitter account for, for creatures advertised right on the front creatures, the first NFT project and play to earn game on Solana, uh, play to earn games, uh, began with Saratobi on counterparty back in 2016. And then, uh, they kind of really became popularized or you see the, the horde, um, kind of started seeing the, the big vision around 2018, uh, 2019 on, on Ethereum, but now with, with Solana, it has, uh, obviously low transaction fees, which can create uh, a more frictionless game environment, but it can also, uh, encourage a lot of spam. So it's a, right. It, there's a lot of features, but then there's a lot of, uh, new attack vectors as, as well. Um, I'm going to open up. There was something that you, you had written, which I found, uh, quite inspiring and interesting talking about, uh, the creatures and your, and your building process and it talks about the the pilot episode when you began uh tinkering around with with the idea of creatures uh late january and february of 2021 which is about a year and a half ago but salon i believe was created in 2020 so it's like kind of fairly new into its ecosystem um and right as nfts began uh, on ethereum began to, to start to catch a little bit of trend uh wh why did you choose solana um, back in a time when Solana was, I had had to be under a dollar at that point in time, um, and with a new uh, language as well. I believe it's written in in Rust, which is which is not EVM compatible. So there was, you had to completely be an outlier and go go do your own thing. I did, yeah. So um, you know, with the last few years, we we've all had a whole bunch of extra time on our hands uh, with uh, COVID, or, or you know, typically inside. Um, so I, like I said, I've been a big nerd my whole life. I've built you know lots of things for work, um, and then for myself, but never released anything to the world. And so, and in my previous life, I was a, a project and program manager, so delivering you know million dollar projects for others. Um, and I wanted to like deliver something for me and go through the process. Um, so, you know, my favorite crypto Ken, um, was on, actually it started on Ethereum and then, uh, moved to, oh, what was the, I can't even remember the chain before, um, it'll, it'll come to me later, but, uh, and it moved to, uh, to Solana. So, um, Ken itself, I could talk about it all, all day long. It has a very beautiful, like a mining operation. It's essentially like building something delightful for users. Um, and then you get rewarded for that as uh, the developer. So it existed on Solana. They had moved to Solana. Um, I knew I wanted to build a game. I'm a gamer. If, if it burned and died, I wanted to still have something that I would play. Um, so Ken being on Solana, Solana, the transaction fees being um, more approachable for, you know, game in-game transactions um, for, you know, mainstream adoption. Uh, it, it all just kind of added up like my favorite cryptos on Ken, uh, the, the, the chain is fast. The transaction fees actually support having a game. So I'm just going to build a game and, and see what happens. So it was, it's really as easy as that. And quite interesting. Yeah, Ken, I remember, is being um, one of the, those massive ICOs back in 2017 that caught a lot of traction. Then I believe it got into some sort of like legal troubles um, as like an uh, illegal security sale. Uh, so quite interesting that you, that you followed that. But here you mentioned uh, right in the beginning of the pilot episode, it says that Metaplex didn't exist, Candy Machine didn't exist, Phantom didn't exist. I know Phantom is the, the Web3 wallet. So th these are a lot of uh, large hurdles um, to overcome. It says that there was no NFT metadata standard. 
How, how did you go about even creating this? Where Did you have to talk with the, the whatever the equivalent of the Solana Foundation is to create some sort of standard for it? Or did you just go here out on your own with your own team and then everyone kind of followed afterwards? No, yeah. So, I mean, at the time, there was uh, certainly, you know, documentation that was really geared towards developers and uh, the CLI tool, the command line interface tool um, for creating like SPL tokens on Solana, um, which, you know, the NFTs, uh, NFTs are. Um, so all the documentation was there to kind of like create the NFTs themselves, but it's like everything else was um, really, I, just, I took it as like an ex partly as an exciting challenge. And then half of it was crossing my fingers because at the end of the day, I wanted to make an NFT collection that people like, oh, okay, that, that's kind of cool. Um, and then also a game. I did not want to build, I didn't, I didn't want to be a bank. I didn't want to build a wallet. I didn't want to build eBay. So a marketplace. So like all of these big things uh, that we take uh, for granted today, I was really like crossing my fingers, like, okay, eBay would be popular. There's got to be, someone's going to come out with this. So hopefully by the time I need it, someone's done it. Um, and uh, um, yeah, and with the, you know, the metadata and whatnot, like there's, there's decisions I made in the beginning that, just bite me in the butt once a month. That's just irritating. Like uh, the where I save creatures um, at the time for our, our deck one, um, it's not as fast as Air Weave, uh, what we you know put on our deck two. So some of those early decisions, I got some wins and, and uh, um, had some gambles that paid off. And then other things are like, man, it's freaking, I wish the background, you know, if you look at any NFT collection out there today, especially the most popular ones that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, they all have these beautiful gradient backgrounds. And I remember when I decided, no, I'm making a game. I want the character to be, you know, that's the focus. So I'm not having any backgrounds for the early creatures. Um, and that was a really poor decision on my part. So, you know, uh, not, not all of my guesses were, were correct. Yeah, it's funny because as you're speaking, I'm already identifying some of the parallels that uh, some of the, the we call them the pre-ERC721 pre uh, token projects were created because they're all customized contracts. Um, so you mentioned, just, just so I have the terminology correct, SPL is the equivalent of ERC? Um, yeah, the Solana program... Uh, um SPL Salon program library. It's like, the, Ooh, is that, it, but yeah, yeah, you're right. That's, um, I mean, that's how, um, NFTs exist on the Solana blockchain. So same thing. It's, that's the, yeah, the ERC seven, what, 721, um, Yep. Yep. Contract. So yeah, it's equivalent. Yeah. Equivalent. Yeah. And that's the issue with, uh, there's recently an issue with, uh, there's a project called ether Lambos, which was created before ERC 21, before the ERC 721. And, we weren't, they weren't able to be purchased on OpenSea for three weeks because of some, some, some sort of like uh, nuance in the contract that is pre ERC 721 and has the issues. And as you mentioned, you face a lot of these, uh, the, the similar uh, issues within, uh, within delegation. Is there, yeah, is there, and, is there anything, sorry to cut you off. Is there anything sorry. in the contract now that, uh, now I'm assuming there probably is some sort of standard, um, that you have to, uh, build around and you weren't able to, to modify because of the, the new standards that were put into play afterwards? Yeah, there are. So it's, um, you know, one of the challenges that we have, so for instance, like if you load up your, you know, Phantom Wallet and you have your deck one creatures in, uh, in Phantom Wallet, uh, the deck one or the earliest creatures, um, those were stored on IPFS. Uh, we launched before IPFS and Pinata had like dedicated gateways and, and whatnot. So essentially like when you open Phantom, you only see like six of the images of your deck one creatures because it hits a rate limit and the metadata itself is uh, immutable um, because I thought, collectors cared uh, at the, at the time. I'm like, no, why would you want to allow me to change the metadata after you buy it, I'm going to make it immutable. Um, so that's something that, yeah, we can't, you know, uh, unless uh, Phantom or wallets like that change how they pull the images. Um, that's a pain that our collectors have to have to deal with. Um, but uh, so, you know, because we're the, you know, the first on Solana, there's a lot of pros with that. But one of the cons is, 
no one's going to want to like do a token swap and burn their old creature to get like new metadata, new, you know, a new and improved creature where it doesn't have these flaws, um, you know, because the standards didn't exist at the time. Um, so that, that's one of the things that, uh, like you mentioned, it's just pain, the, the pain of being early. Yeah, it, it really is. And and now moving down to, to March 26, 2021, that's written uh, in your blog talking about uh, when you deployed the, the or Mint Day, otherwise known as Day Gen Zero, was incepted. Uh, deploying on Friday is always a bad idea. And that day I contributed to that well-known phrase. I actually had no idea. Is that is that because there's just not a lot of people on the network at the time? Or is it the opposite? Oh. Yeah. So mo I spent, you know, before all of this, like a decade, 10, 12 years as a project manager, um, uh, all in the I IT space, um, mainly software development, some, some infrastructure and whatnot. And like the worst thing in the world that you can do on an IT project is push some big change on a Friday because it it's Murphy's laws. You're going to, going to hit that something's going to go wrong and you're going to have people having to either stay late on a Friday or working on the weekend or whatever. Um, and you just, just wait until Monday because if something is on fire, well, they're working tomorrow anyways. Um, and the whole deployment process worked flawlessly, but the site itself, I, I had a misconfigured SSL um, cert and you would go to, you know, creatures.com and you would get the, the big scary, like, this in Chrome, this site maybe is unsecure and, you know, proceed with caution and whatnot. And that took like an hour to fix, but it was just, it was not the, the welcome that I was hoping, uh, to, uh, to, to put out there. That's funny. I, I did not realize that. And, and as I moved through the paragraphs, it talks about how, uh, collectors didn't need the site technically because we're creating NFTs and they live on chain and the metadata and images were on IPFS. But again, this was before phantom and hundreds of other tools that we enjoy today. So it, is this the equivalent of the on-chain that we see? I'm not sure if you're familiar with like Mooncats and now CryptoPunks and a few other ones where you can uh, reconstruct the SVG file through the uh, data that's stored on-chain. Is that similar to Solana where you don't need IPFS and the images are completely on-chain or is there some sort of nuance to it? Um, well, yeah, so you, you do need somewhere to store the files and you, you could probably and, and creatures start as SD, SVGs. Uh, um, so uh, um, it's interesting you, you mentioned SVG. So you could probably could store the data in an account. Um, I don't know how expensive that would be, but yeah, it's for, um, I won't make up some percentage, but I don't even know of a project that stores the actual images on um the Solana blockchain itself, they all point to, uh -huh. most of them point to AR Weave. Um, and, uh, and then some early uh, projects like us uh, used IPFS at the time. Um, so the, the metadata is on chain, um, the pointer to like the IPFS CID, the identifier um, is on chain, but the actual image itself is on something else. And that's something that, you know, collectors, rightfully call projects out for like hey this is an nft it's on solana you know whatever but why are you why is the metadata pointing to uh, an aws bucket you know th those are those are things you know questions you should ask when you when you notice that like why is it you know is it really decentralized if the actual image itself is on you know aws or azure or whatnot and this is a semantic debate that is probably the most contentious within the, the historical NFT community. Um, when you go back to, you know, Namecoin, which is the first altcoin, which uh, Satoshi Nakamono oh, advocated for in the Bitcoin talk forums, you know, to, to Bitcoin, which we know about Bitcoin maximalism, it, there there is a high degree of decentralization with those early projects because that's like what the community as uh, ideology was at the time. But now we, as we move into more of a, uh, consumerist, uh, or as blockchain moves more into consumerism and more into some modern approaches with gaming, there has to be those sacrifices, right? It's the, the crypto trilemma where it's like decentralization, security, and speed. You can only have two or three, two of three. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we know Ethereum's kind of going through one of those, those trade-offs moving to, to proof of stake. So it's just funny that 
no matter what chain you go to, there's always the same type of arguments. It just depends on like what specifically you're, you're trying to build. And, and, you know, that's what creates like maximalism and tribalism, uh, within the, the blockchains. And it's probably not going to go anywhere, but I think understanding that is, is, is very important. Yeah. And you know, it's, um, I mean, there's, there's certainly a spectrum, right? There are limits to uh, to the preferences uh, that people have um, that maybe take it too far. But we're all different. We're all unique. We all value different things. Like we're we're never going to agree on what's perfect perfect because we all we all value different things, and that's that's okay. Um, and uh, and you're right. Like you know, all, all the change have made plenty of decisions um, to go in you know different directions based on what they value. Um, and that, you know, that's what makes things, uh, interesting. And then on this day, March 26, 2021, you said the the good for that day, the actual NFT creation worked out amazingly well. Uh, and then go on to say that, uh, I look back and smile because creatures was born. Uh, when, it, when that day happened and the, the contract was deployed and some were minted, was there anyone around that was applauding you for, for putting NFTs on Solana? Was it, was it just you in the corner kind of shouting at the cloud? Uh, was there a community following you through this endeavor? Through this endeavor? Yeah, there, there, there were, and, um, and there were, you know, quite a few crazy other people that were, were interested. You know, I, I started, so that was launch day, probably about a month before that late February is when, you know, I created, uh, the, the Twitter and whatnot. And, and I basically allowed people to pre-register and, you know, essentially the deal was like, Hey, if you, if you're giving me your attention, you care about this at all. And you just pre-register sign up to be notified that, you know, I want a creature. If you pre-register, then you're getting a creature for free. Um, so it, uh, you know, we probably gave away 20% of the actually, you know, a little more than 20% of the supply, um, on uh to just for people that that pre-registered that that were interested um and believed in at least the vision um so uh so yeah it was you know over over a thousand um probably close to two thousand um people at the at the time which was insane you you know it's like because again it was before there was nothing else like that and you know just you know yeah. Two thousand crazy people, you know, checking me out. There is this is like we mentioned. This is this is before the the infamous uh, Sam Bankman free tweet where he says, uh, "Sell me all of your Solana at three dollars and and fuck off." And that's kind of and then it <laughs> and then it rode up to, to uh, two hundred dollars or something like that, and then built more of this this uh, this avalanche of people moving in, and. Then says from March 26 to August 31st, 2021, this period involved ensuring all early adopters receive their creatures, handling creature purchases as they came in and lots, lots and lots of continued scariness as I worked to refine the vision and put foundational pieces in place. Did I mention building things in public is scary uh, for at least for at least for me it is and it, it really quite is so i'm assuming that this this period of about 5 to 6 months was this actual building and refining and community curation as uh, this is meanwhile nfts are absolutely going bananas on on eth at the time crypto punk rise to 100 eth floor or something like that uh, what t- tell us a little bit about the this time building during um, this summer when other chains when, when ETH NFTs are going absolute bananas and you're here trying to, uh, replicate the, the early time, the early, uh, NFT community of Ethereum, maybe from 2017, you're like, it's like in that similar time period. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, just trying to figure out, uh, one, there was a game. So I'm a, uh, you know, a, a special kind of nerd. So I like like text-based RPGs, um, in addition to like other type of games. And, uh, so that's what I was building and I, I wanted to build something that was fun for not only me, but others. So, you know, a lot of that, um, back and forth, uh, getting feedback and, and ideas and all that with the community, but also just figuring out like, what, what does it even look like? You know, it, today we take for granted, like every week, every month, you know, someone's throwing out like, oh, here's the new meta. This is what everyone cares about now, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, it's about this. You need to do that. You need to do staking. You need to uh, whatever, uh, whitelist, the whitelist meta, um, uh, all kinds of stuff. But at the time, it's like, 
how can I provide value to you? whether you got a creature for free or you bought one, like, uh, you know, I need to make a fun game for you. And then what else is there besides that? Um, and, uh, you know, it was just me at the time, um, you know, working, I had a day job. I worked uh, as a cloud, you know, program manager, um, during the day. So this was all in the, uh, in the evening and really just making a lot of friends, um, and talking about like, what, what should this even be? Like, what, what are we doing? Um, let's do something cool, but what is, what is even, you know, what, what is that even? It's quite funny looking back at how, um, isolating the, the periods can be when you're, when you're just not putting your head down and building and then out of nowhere, everything could completely change. And that's what I'm assuming this August 31st, uh, tweet is that you put here, which is OX function, who has gone on now to be one of the biggest Solana whales. He's one of the biggest Solana NFT advocators. And he says, uh, it looks like creatures gen zero was pre Solarians and the first generative NFT on Solana. I don't know, but I, be- I aped thanks uh, Klondike NFT for the flip. So I'm, I'm assuming after this tweet happened, um, there's brought a lot more attention and, and eyeballs to the project. It did. And, um, it, like we, we <laughs> sold out in a couple of hours of what was available. So originally the model was similar to uh, crypto kitties where one on average, one creature was being born um, generated every 12 minutes. I think it was like between 10 and 15 minutes. Um, so uh, at the time we had like 700 ish in the, uh, in the queue that were available. Um, certainly not uh, at our, our max. But yeah, like I was working during the day. Um, I had, you know, two completely separate computers, workstations, one for my job and, you know, one for creatures that was separate. Um, But I would I I set it up that I would hear like a ding, like an audio, um, uh, some audio every time I got a sell. And uh, I'm in a meeting like a Cisco meeting. and, And then I just started hearing these dings over and over again. It was like. It was going crazy. I thought I was getting hacked or some server was down. Something bad was happening because usually I get one or two dings a day, um, not 700. Um, and uh, it was it was crazy. So I checked and then I had to check again. Um, and uh, and yeah. And and now it was like, man, I, I think I need some help. <laughs> and that's exactly what you put on, on this next ex- excerpt. Um, I'm pretty sure I need help in September 2021. And just goes on to say here some highlighted parts. Creature is the first NFT collection on Solana, and Deck One was first out of the gate. Uh, just just took for clarification, is, what what is Deck One exactly? Is that is that equivalent of Layer One, or is that something specific to creatures? No. Oh, so yeah, it's specific to creatures. So um, the vision um, has always been to. Um, think of it as like a, a packs like magic the gathering or, or, or whatever but um like hey this is pack one so there's or deck one so there's these uh in deck one we had 13 different species of uh, of creature 13 different types um and they all had a, a similar style no background whatever um and then deck two uh those are creatures um, but there's there's 39 of those species, so um, it's more of like uh, you know your Pokemon and your different generation Pokemon. Um, it's all Gen Zero. There's a limit, um, but there are you know differences between Deck One and Deck Two. Uh, so yeah, it really it it really does uh, draw some inspiration from Crypto Kitties, as uh, we were talking before. That was one of the the early NFT projects that you were. Uh, dabbling with, so you have the breeding, but then you're adding the the game mechanic to it. And now I have the the website open up and I'm looking through a little bit of it and I know everyone wants to see these images um, and I'm going to show them here in a second, but, um, but first I, I see you have a, a roadmap on here. Oh, this is a pretty cool roadmap actually talking about the the breeding and uh, kind of the, the, the historical timeline of, of what you want to do out here in the future. Yeah, and you can go, yeah, and you can certainly go back in time. So this, uh, um, you know, building in public, like I really believe for us, what I'm, um, you know, what's right for us uh, with building in public is truly building in public. Like, you know, giving you access where you can see what is going on now, what are what is coming up next, what are our goals, what are our blockers, stuff like that. Um, and this is probably because uh, I probably think this because you know I was a 
project and program manager for, you know, 10, 12 years. Um, so in addition to this, we're actually uh, creating a separate roadmap that has the highlights of this. Um, Cause what we found is we, we certainly have collectors that are very interested in this type of information. Um, and we also have other collectors that this is uh, quite overwhelming. They, they don't care about the individual blades of grass. They want to see the high level view. Um, and that's what you actually see in most other projects that high level, you know, here are the four things we're doing this quarter kind of thing. Um, so we're going to make that available, but yeah, here you get to see all the details from, you know, pretty much the last like six, seven months. Um, I think is when we started using this. And the thing with building in public is, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, especially if you're somebody who's a little bit more on the, the reserved side, but it, it gives you a lot of self accountability. Uh, I'm somebody very similar where if I want to do something, I'll tell a bunch of my closest friends that I'm going to do it. And then uh, I hold myself uh, to a higher degree of, of uh, accountability. So I'll end up doing this and here with your community, now that they have a financial interest, those are almost like your friends that are doing kind of the same thing, although they're probably a little bit more annoying because they're coming in and asking for the floor price and <laughs> some other some other more uh, issues with it. But uh, it's it's cool to see because that's kind of what the future of uh, the digital economy or the creator economy is, is uh, we're all really in this together and we're all going to hold each other accountable. And so yeah. n now I have Open Magic Eden, which is the, the equivalent of Open Seats, the marketplace uh, for Solana that just recently took off, I believe, within like the last nine months, um, which actually adds a, a question before I do before we dissect uh, the, the graphics is before Magic Eden, where were you selling uh, these creatures right here. It says that the first mint was March 26, 2021. I know Magic Eden was started. It was created about nine months ago. Um, how, how are you selling these? <laughs> Yeah, so um, the first marketplace that came out, I believe, was Digitalize. We, we certainly got on that when it came out, but that wasn't even out at the time. So it, it was literally going to almost like the uh, um, when projects run and what we did with Dex2, where they have their own site um, where you go click the mint button. Mm. Um, so you would go into a site I made um, where the design was terrible and brutalistic uh, and uh, looked like you were, you know, navigating notepad um but uh um, you would go there all the images uh, were available and you would pick out which one you want you would click the uh button and in the beginning like there were no there, there weren't even like transactions like i click the button and it shows up in my wallet right now because the people buying in the beginning or the early adopters that pre-registered they didn't even have like a wallet um so i think we're down to maybe a dozen that's still in the creature's wallet uh, waiting and begging for collectors to come, you know, Hey, this is your creature. You never collected it. Let's send it to your wallet. Um, but in the beginning it was like, they would buy it. Um, send me the, uh, send me the, uh, the soul or the kin. Um, and I would, and they had an option. Do you, do you even have a wallet that supports NFTs? Uh, if so, do you want me to send this to you? Um, if not, then we'll just hold it in the creature's wallet until you're ready to receive it. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was just a custom site I built and it was very manual. Like think back, like what did we do before PayPal and, and, and all of that? Um, in Zelle, it was like, all right, I'm going to go hand you 20 bucks. Um, it was, it was almost as painful as that for everyone involved quite interesting yeah you had to web3 enable your own your own website before this create a more frictionless environment so i opened up now and i'm sorting it from from rare to common and um, these are all they all look very unique and, and individual um take me through um a hand like take me through this first one which is looks like it's the rarest um how how does this have an effect on the game what is it and uh why is this considered, yeah, the, the, the rarest one? Yeah, so rarity in, uh, with creatures goes beyond just like, you know, you see Susan here, who's a rare, it's number four. So if you look at the uh, species rarity, um, you'll see it says rare. So you have rare, which means in the entire collection, all 5,000, there will only ever be a max of 10 of these. There's only ever going to be 10 Susan. And, and I mean, 
and, and all of them have been generated. So there's out of 5,000, there's only 10 Susan um, this, uh, this tight. Um, so you have rare, and then the next level up is uncommon, um, which means there's a max of 50 for that species. Um, so uh, on the first screen, you had like lightning. There's a, you know, uh, a few different types of, a uh, few different species that are uncommon. Um, and it's limited to 50 of that, that species. And then you have common um, that doesn't have a limit on how many of that species will exist up to like the gen zero limit, right? Of 5,000. So um, that's where the rarity starts. And then you can see like if you have special abilities, less than 10% of all creatures have any kind of special the special ability and then you have the types you know your, your typical like ice water fire flying ground um you know we have uh, those those different types and then we have you know metadata for parents and obviously all the gen zero none of them have parents but that's that's there for later um for uh, for breeding interesting and then and then you go down and have the details and this is the the contracts and the the bidding uh the the artist royalty fee um, quite interesting thing. So this one sold for, for 200 soul six months ago. So that was a quite, quite a pretty penny on this. This is there. They all look super unique. You mentioned that these were generative, um, so that they were created through, through an algorithm. Where did the, where did the art come from? Did you have, did you draw this? Did you have it in-house artist? No. Did, did you use yeah, Fiverr? <laughs> Um, I had s several different artists. So in the very beginning, um, as I was going through like the envisioning stage of, you know, trying to um, get my, my ideas on paper, I am not uh, an artist uh, of, uh, of this type. So um, in the very beginning, it was very much like, a, um, what is that, that movie? Um, there was probably 10 different artists that I essentially, you know, you know, on Fiverr, Upwork, uh, local artists here, and basically gave them all, it paid, um, the, the same job. Like, here is my vision of, you know, a particular type, and we just went type by type, um, and, and gave them all, like, the same job. And it's like, all right, if I pay 10 different artists um, to, uh, to build this, then at least a couple of them are going to be, um, they're all impressive, but more in line with what I was in imagining. Um, and then it really came down over that time, down to two, uh, Alyssa and, and Sundaran. Um, and they're, they're uh, amazing. And like what you're the one, the creatures that are a little bit more complicated, like what you're looking at here came from uh, Sundaran, um, who, who's an amazing artist. And then uh, the ones that are um, uh, not as complicated, uh, but still, you know, uh, pretty cool, like Ash there, and um, um, you, you actually, the names aren't even on the screen. So yeah, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. But the ones that are less complicated came from Alyssa, um, and that, that was her style, and I, I loved it. And I love that, all right, there's um, a whole bunch of different species themselves uh, that you have variety there, and then also in just the style itself. So, so it's a, co but, yeah, a collaborative maybe, approach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They did an amazing job, like taking my poor communication at uh, what my vision was and turning it into what you what you see there. And they created the base, um, and then I had an algorithm. You know, that they, they are vector artists, so it's all SVGs. Um, they're not raster artists, um, or that's not what I asked for. Um, so you know, they created the base. Uh, which are SVGs, and then I created the code um, that essentially modified those SVGs with different colors, different backgrounds, different attributes, depending on um, some of them, like Rufus even has different expressions um, from, uh, you know, one Rufus to another. Um, so that's, that's where the generative part came from. Right. The, the colors are, they're very vibrant, uh, neon and like very neon pastel, a uh, very, very modern, uh, approach to it. It's quite, quite unique. Uh, so now let's go a little bit and move over to, uh, the gameplay. If, if I wanted to play, I know you mentioned that there's a, a staking component to it. Is that, um, how does the, how does that just take me through the, the gameplay before we go into that? 
Yeah, um, I don't even know if you have an account. Uh, if anyone's listening, it's beta.creatures.com. Um, that's where the game is. And you'll, uh, um, so staking, um, at least for us, is not related to the gameplay. Staking is a, uh, um, is a way to reward collectors. Um, okay. I, there's plenty of other projects that um, uh, it is part of their actual, like, game or whatever. And that's, that's great for them. Um, but, uh, um yeah, I don't, um, let's see, do we have, oh, uh, yeah, you got uh, a little bit of a YouTube page. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That combat, uh, that combat beta, um, that's the old one. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to look at the old site and see what I can make on my own, um, without a designer, then you can, uh, you can look at, uh, that other, yeah, that, that video. Um, but, uh, I thought we had, yeah, I think the other video actually has a modern UI, um, this UI is what I built without a designer. And you can tell uh, no, designer, <laughs> no designer was involved in this. But the concept is similar. So right. our new UI at beta.creatures.com, uh, it looks a lot better. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, but the concept is similar in that it's a text-based RPG. So you have energy, uh, a limited amount of energy that you get every day. Um, and you decide based on how you plan on playing your character, how you're going to allocate that energy. So you can see strength, defense, um, uh, dexterity and speed there. So you allocate that energy. Um, and, uh, we have plenty of, you know, players that kind of balance it out. We have plenty of players that are walking around with a uh, big, strong, like they put everything in strength. Um, and that contributes to, uh, to combat, uh, in addition to, you know, their special ability and type and all of that. Um, yeah, it looks like this whole video is the old UI. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, um, but yeah, that's the, that's the concept. And then what, what you saw there, um, was, you know, the, uh, whether it's combat inventory management, you know, uh, skills and, and whatnot. So our goal is, um, and I, you know, what I, what I've been, um, communicating to uh, players is like, 15 to 30 minutes of joy every single day. That, that's, that's the intent. If you're into this type of game, um, we want you to be able to get in quickly. So um, it's, you know, there's plenty of games that I play that, oh, I, I don't have two hours, so I'm not even going to get into this game because it's going to take me 20 minutes to even figure out what I was doing before. Uh, we want you to be able to get into the game easily, um, do what you want to do. So we want to have plenty of depth to the game. So we have combat that's out now. So you train your creature, you, um, you can, you know, fight other, other NFTs, um, or you can, uh, and then, you know, we've got, uh, you know, skills, um, and education coming out. So we want you to have a pretty deep experience within the game, lots to do. Um, and then we want you to be able to easily get out. So, uh, get in, have fun 15 to 30 minutes a day and then get out and continue. Um, so, uh, yeah. And when, and when and you're just, and when you're playing this game, is there a token associated with it? Are you awarded in, in NFTs or right now is it just for pure entertainment? The uh, no, so it's a free to play game, uh, and we've opened up the game to um, to all NFTs on Solana. So mm. um, you you don't even have to have a creature um, to. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, I, I know this is impromptu, but. If if you were if you release something and you're not embarrassed by the first thing you release and you waited too long, uh, and I'm completely embarrassed by uh, the the first thing that I release, what you have up on the screen there. But if you uh, we like Google, to hold on, Daniel. We we like we like the history here. Okay, we like progress. <laughs> you know, we like we like the we like the embarrassing moments. So the, they're probably everyone who's watching probably would rather see this than what the actual new product looks like. Okay. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> This has been updated, but yeah, so, um, but yeah, we, it's a free to play game. You don't even have to have a creature. You can go to beta.creatures.com, um, connect your, your wallet, whether it's phantom or, or whatever. If you have any NFT that is part of a collection that's tracked by magic Eden, then you can play our game. Um, so one, 
Um, and there's no there's no fee for that. Now, our in-game currency is Ken. So we do have the Cree Pass, uh, which is like a, a thousand Ken a week, which is, I think, like a, one cent. Um, and if you have the Cree Pass, then any achievements you earn, you'll get uh, Ken from those achievements. And then also we have the daily activity bonus. So every single day that you log in um, and train your creature or other NFT, um, you're rewarded in Ken for that. So right now there's a 2 million Ken per day pool. Um, and we average about 3,000 NFTs that get played with each day. Um, so you can do the math. It's like a 800, you know, seven, 800 on average um, ish per day of uh, per NFT that players earn when they have the Cree Pass. So you can play the game completely um, without all of that. But the play to earn part is is that if you have a Cree Pass, then um, you can get the the can for any achievements and activity. So, so let me get this straight then. Creatures is not only an interoperable game from a non-fungible perspective, it's been an, it's an interoperable game from a fungible perspective because you brought in an in-game currency that was created four years before Creatures was even uh, even a thing. That's that's something yeah. that I think that's, that's like kind of something that Ape Token's trying to do is where they're trying to be the token of all of these different uh, non-fungible games. But it's already happening on Solano. I, I, I did not realize that. Yeah, and you know there there's plenty of projects that create their own token for their thing, their utility, and that that's fine. That works for them, but for for us and um, for creatures, like making a game or making a successful um, NFT collection. And when I say success, I mean success from a collector's perspective, not the team that's putting it out, um, maybe with promises and promises, whatever, but, um, creating something that's successful from a collector's perspective, that's like an impossible task already. Like it's incredibly hard. Um, it requires constant, you know, constant work daily. Um, it's, it's just, you know, an impossible challenge that, that we attempt to, um, overcome that all by itself is hard. But then when you bring in, you know, uh, a brand new coin, like think of how many thousands and thousands of crypto coins are out there today. Um, creating one that actually has value is another impossible task, like all by itself. So I was like, I love Kin, I love their mining operation, and I'm only trying to do like one or two impossible things at a time. I'm not trying to create a brand new coin itself. Um, also, like if you look at some projects in their coin, go try and swap it on Radium, which is uh, one of the sites that you can use, or Phantom. Um, try and swap it for something else, like Sol or whatever, and see what it's really worth, um, because it's an it, it impossibly, mm -hmm. incredibly hard thing to do. I wanted to reward players with something that has value independent of creatures. So even if creatures... I get hit by a bus, the whole team dies or, you know, whatever creatures just die. It's like all the kin that you've earned, you, it still has value because its value isn't based on creatures. So for, for me, that's, that's what works best for, for creatures. And, and one of the things that I think sets us apart. I, I like that. I, I was not aware that that was existing. So is, is creatures, are you guys mining the kin? And then that's what the prize pool is, is from the mining operation. Yeah. Oh my God. It, it is amazing. So yes. Um, so Ken, um, and I could torture you all day, but Ken's mining operation, um, is essentially bringing users into the Ken ecosystem. So they are buying Ken, um, they're spending Ken. So that's like our Cree pass. That's our, our, one of our spends. Um, so when you, when users use your app and they spend Ken in your app, like, Essentially, if you're building something delightful and useful, you're rewarded for that. Um, and there's, you know, uh, when you're talking about tracking it all, like whenever you, you know, spin can in creatures or any other can app, um, there's, I don't know, like 80 of them or something like that. Um, I don't even know the number. Um, but whenever you spin can in one of uh, uh, the can apps, it's tracked on the blockchain that this particular transaction came from creatures or it came from Kenny or cafeteria or whatever. Um, and you get credit for that and you're rewarded for that on a weekly basis. Uh, if you go to Ken.org, 
the Cree is what it, it's called, the, the Ken Rewards Engine. Um, you'll see, um, you know, the top few apps are making, you know, thousands of dollars a week um, from their Cree Rewards alone. Um, so as a, as a developer, um, a creator, that that's beautiful. Like, okay, if I build something that's useful or fun or valuable in some way, I can be rewarded in that way rather than, let me throw a whole bunch of ads on the game. Let me take your personal data and, and sell it to the highest bidder. Like those are things that I do not like. Um, and this is a way to monetize without doing that. Yeah, that's, it's, that's quite unique. So now we're go, let's move to the, the interoperable, non-fungible part. There's about, I believe it said there's about 4,500 creatures that exist currently. Um, is, that, is that right? I think that's what it said on Magic Eden. Uh, yeah, there's... Um, um, yeah, that's 4,600. I think it's like 4,562, so. something like that. Um, so the uh, the max um, that will ever exist is uh, is 5,000. Um, okay. So uh, so yeah. So that puts a hard scale on the value. How many how many other tokens from other games are being played within the the creature uh, battle system? So we there are over i i look i i thought you might ask that's so why i looked it's like three hundred and seventy one thousand individual nfts that um are in players wallets that have connected to the game and said wow. you know click the sync collect button sync collection button and said like i want to play this game with at least one of my nfts that's in my wallet so there's like three hundred seventy one thousand um total that we're tracking um, on any random day, there's about 3,000, uh, we call them crew with a K, 3,000, you know, which is an individual NFT. Uh, there's about 3,000 that get played with um, on, any, on any given day. Wow, that's, that's, that's quite incredible, amazing accomplishment. So congrats to that. In terms of the, uh, terms of the value and moving more into the Gen Zero historical perspective, is there, is there a premium on some of these uh, very early tokens, the ones that are Gen Zero or the one of the, some of the first ones that were ever minted? Do, does the community value those higher? They do. They do. And what, what you'll see is, um, you know, when you dive into like the dates and whatnot, um, the, the 26 March 2021 creatures, mm -hmm. um, and I think the filter on the left hand side to the left of items uh, includes uh, the birthday. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, it's. Um, so, yeah, if you did 2021 dash three, you know, dash 26 um, or zero three, I think it is. Sorry. Okay, you're good. Dash 26. Yeah, 26. Um, you filter. Yeah, I mean, you can see what is the floor out there. See, oh, there's some, only one. Yeah, there's, there's only there's one only, for sale. Wow. Oh, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you went back in the activity, you'll see those uh, being sold mm -hmm. uh, or bought, um, you know, even within the last month for like 20 and 25 sold. Um, so, you know, collectors are definitely valuing. Um, the creatures that were born before Solarians. So Solarians was the second project. They came out like, uh, you know, about nine days later, you know, about nine or 10 days later after creatures. Um, so the creatures that were born on the very first day seem to have great value to uh, collectors. Um, and then the creatures that were born before the second project um, have a value. Um, and then beyond that, you know, uh, it looks like collectors are doing the same thing I would do. Like, you know, all of the creatures, the, the different species have their own sequence number for the species. So you'll see collectors are picking up like, I want the number one lightning and I want the number one ash and Rufus and whatnot. Um, so uh, you'll, you'll see those. And then also things like special abilities and the type and whatnot. Um, just because they're more rare and then also they will contribute to staking. Um, so right now we're, we've just launching staking. Um, the beta started last Friday with a launch, you know, for everyone this coming Friday, but the base staking is if you have a creature, you're getting, you know, X amount of Ken per day for staking. Um, but the next step is now, if your creature has a special ability and if it's an uncommon and all of those other characteristics. So uh, it looks like, you know, collectors are preparing for that. Um, so. Wow. That's, it's really quite beautiful. That's the similar, we, we, we get stuck in these like 
tribalistic uh, communities based off of, you know, your collection of, you know, I'm just going to use moon cats. That's the one that, that kind of helped me get to where I was and then historical community and then ETH. And uh, you, you think a lot of these, these traits and a lot of the actions that the, the community uh, exudes is, is just specific to the community. And then you realize it's actually human psychology and human instinct that's carrying over. So this is actually quite insightful that the, the, the earliest tokens um, are most valuable. And then the ones that are pre uh, Solarians, because that's also a uh, very uh, common uh, investment strategy within the historical community is finding uh, one, for example, is a uh, crypto arte, which is an early generative project, but the, but the most popular, uh, but the most popular generative project is autoglyphs, which came about a year earlier. And so all of the crypto arte that's uh, pre autoglyphs is actually like mm -hmm. super valuable because of the, the history behind it. It's, it's quite amusing. Yeah. And it, and it makes sense. It's uh, just like your, you know, your old school baseball cards. And I know there's plenty of uh, base, you know, card collectors and whatnot. It's, it's uh, just a, a new medium, new medium for that. Um, but yeah, all the, all the same rules seem to apply. And then regarding the the overall Solana NFT community uh, history, if it's similar to, to Ethereum, uh, history kind of gets left behind because they've moved at least currently to the the flipper economy where everyone's just trying to maximize profits. Uh, do you, do you, is that similar to Solana right now? And then do you see some of those flippers migrate over there and appreciate the history, or do you think uh, you have to take a different approach? Um, a more modern approach for now before the history can kind of, uh, increase in value. Yeah. You, you know what? So, um, I personally believe at some point in time, no promises, not financial advice, all the standard disclaimers, but at some point in time being first will matter. Like I, I might be dead. We might be, you know, whatever, but at some point in time it'll matter. Um, but it, it's, we can't we can't rest on that like it, it it doesn't matter to the degree of like your crypto punks and all the earliest ones because that was what five six seven plus mm -hmm. years ago right we're we're only a year into this or you know a year and a half for for us um so for us it's like okay we know this will matter at some point in time but we we need to give our collectors some value before we get there and, and how do we do that um in a way that is um, within our, um, I won't say, uh, you know, morals is not maybe the right, <laughs> right term for it. Um, yeah, it's but, the right uh, vision, with, you know, the right uh, vision with, with what we're comfortable, um, doing and saying, like, I'm not going to, um, I do not believe in the, the vicious, like FOMO hype cycle. I don't believe in, I believe in building a community. Um, but you know, it, even that that's not for everyone. It, it is hard to be a community member. Like if you take a step back or join another community, um, of this type, like if you're not engaged and in that discord or whatever, every single day, um, and then doing whatever, you know, jumping through whatever hoops they want you to jump through for whitelists and, and all of that, um, it's, it's almost like a job just being a community member. So, you know, we certainly, you know, believe in, in making friends and having activities and whatnot, but we're not turning it into a second job for our community. Um, so our strategy, because I, I'm a gamer is, uh, we've got our first game that, uh, that is out and we're working to make it very deep. And then, you know, our, our rewards for, um, from Ken will contribute to what goes into staking. So rewarding that way. Um, and then we have something new coming out that, uh, um, uh, it's related to racing. It's a different experience. And, um, again, we're just not even going to go into it until it's ready because I'm not going to contribute to the crazy, like, uh, empty promises, uh, hype cycle. Um, and I, I probably take that a little too far. Uh, I know Lena, our amazing marketing manager would probably, uh, you know, wish I, I shared more, um, cause not everything needs to be, you know, curing cancer to be valuable, but, mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, so that's, you know, we're, we're continuing to, what is that solution um, of providing value and whatever that means to the community? Obviously, it does mean like Ken rewards, right? I mean, you know, Ken, it should be a financial reward to having a creature. But beyond that, you know, what is, uh, what are they even looking for? 
Not everything needs to cure cancer to be valuable. That's um, that's probably uh, one of the the best statements that I've heard in a long time in terms of uh, valuing assets. And uh, it's a debate that today I was in an argument with, and it's been ongoing for ye- a year now in the historical community of some of these older assets. You know, they're not as technically innovative, but they do exist on the first blockchain. And yet now, now looking at it 10 years later, they seem very primitive, but at the time it was the only thing there. And so it didn't cure cancer, but it helped pave the way to get where we are today. Um, and so try to retroactively like put these labels and apply this like investor logic. It's never existed before, right? It's not, we're, we're in a completely new paradigm, um, as cliche as it sounds. So um, I do want to end that there because I think that's the perfect way to end it. Um, and I hope that sometime, you know, in a year or so, we can do this again and see see how the, the history and the project has grown. But this is, Dan, has been a very like refreshing um, conversation from your growth to see all the parallels um, that exist within the, the other chains of history and um, to see what's happening on Solana. Um, pretty, pretty awesome to see. So uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Oh, th- thank you so much for having me. It's been it's been great, and I look forward to talking to you in the future. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for listening and watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>